This is BYU Sports Nation, brought to you by the BYU Store, simulcast on BYU-TV and BYU-Radio. Now, from Studio B, here's Spencer Linton and Jerem Jordan. BYU Sports Nation is live. Your day-to-day play-by-play in Studio B, presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Monday, August 16th, one day closer to BYU football season. Wherever and however you're connected, great to have you with us. I am Spencer Linton, teamed up, a guy who survived the BYU Sports Nation karma apocalypse, Jerem Jordan. First off, we don't talk about wardrobe. We just show up. We wore the same shirt today. I was trying to ignore it. <laughs> I was trying to ignore it. I don't know if you knew this, but the show is on TV, uh, so it cannot be ignored. Um, shout out to the radio audience. But, yes, regarding the karma apocalypse, we, uh, we, we put together a spot by we, I mean, other people. Yep. We were just in it, uh, which was super fun. Hey, it was the genesis of our original idea, right? Oh, right, right. Yeah, yeah. Well, I didn't want to. Anyway. Okay, um, okay. Yes, we have a new spot out. It's not a commercial because we're not selling anything. But it's a promo for the show. And here it is if you missed it. All right. Next one. Dude, it's Kalani. What? What is it? He keeps bugging me about getting the BOU Sports Nation karma. You don't just hand that out willy-nilly. I know. He's coming this way. Let's go. Hey, guys. You see Spencer and Jeremy? Hey. Uh, I've been looking for you guys. I uh, can't talk right now, Coach. We're going to be late for the show. Jerem, Spencer, there you guys are. They all want the karma. Go, 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 go. Hey, I got a golf tournament this weekend. How about some of that karma? Oh, Ben Bagley, (laughs) the ringer at the end. Ben bringing it home. Uh, I love the shining ode with the Olmsteads. Just, they got into it, too. It was great. I told Sean that he and Heather stole the show, and he (laughs) texted back, you're welcome. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, that was great. That was awesome. That earned the biggest laugh for sure. Yeah. So fun times. Yeah, fun times. Man. Uh, and what's crazy is a minute-long commercial we filmed for two, two days. days. We were in the building till like 1130 at night one night. Yeah, running down the stairs. So fun many times. moving parts Yeah, to make I'm, that 60-second I'm tired thinking about <laughs> running down the stairs. <laughs> thinking about that, yeah. Through the hallways. No, that was fun. That was fun. Yes, we ran a lot. <laughs> That's the last time Jeremy and I collectively worked out. I'm sh- surprised we didn't sprain <laughs> an ankle hopping down the stairs. <laughs> Oh, my goodness. Hey, we've got a fantastic show lineup. No more apocalypse stuff, but we do have an incredible weekend for BYU football players in the National Football League. Wow, busy preseason weekend. We'll uh, detail it. Who had the best weekend? Plus a scrimmage Saturday for BYU football. Any movement on the quarterback front? And a shutout for BYU women's soccer, but we expect that against Weber State. Of course, and the AP Top 25 preseason poll came out. How many BYU opponents are in it? Because BYU is not, not shockingly. Okay, that's what we call a tease. Bring on today's BYU Sports Nation headlines. Saturday, the football team held a scrimmage at LaBelle Edwards Stadium. 90 plays, fully padded, so like a real game. That's right. Here's head coach Kalani Stake on the depth chart. I know you guys may not like it, but there's a lot of oars still right now, which is a good sign. Um, what we're trying to do is just solidify who's going to be the definite starter and who's going to be a definite backup. And then if if we're still unsure, that means that they're both really good and maybe we have to change personnel groups or change uh, some stuff scheme-wise to get, get the best 11 on the field. Today's practice number nine for the Cougars. Also, uh, this just in, James Kahn quoted the tweet from front office sports of the BYU football NLI video, saying, amazing work, end of tweet. James Kahn? James Kahn. That guy. <laughs> that's pretty cool. Wow. Yeah. For uh, our younger generation, that's the dad in Elf. <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly right. <laughs> Among his many other yes. <laughs> yes. Exactly. Don't, you're, no, never mind the award-winning yeah. films. Yeah. He's the dad from Elf. Exactly. 
Zach Wilson made his NFL debut for the New York Jets. I found myself a little bit nervous for him as the game started. Yes, there's a lot of his success, uh, you know, and BYU tied together. He looked sharp. Six for nine. 63 yards. No touchdowns, but did leave one, or did lead rather one scoring drive of field goal. No interceptions. According to Pro Football Focus, he had the highest quarterback rating of any of the rookie quarterbacks over the weekend. More Cougars in the NFL. Taysom Hill got the start for the Saints at quarterback, went 8 for 12, 81 yards passing with an interception. Niners played the Chiefs. Five Cougars were in that one. Fred Warner on the sideline watching, uninjured. He's too good. Zane Anderson had two tackles. Daniel Sorensen also played for the Chiefs. Kai Nakua had a pass defended, six tackles. Corbin Kafusi on the offensive line for the Niners as well. Tyson Williams had 10 carries, 41 yards for the Ravens. Like we said, it's a busy weekend to recap in the NFL. Jamal Williams. Nine carries, 15 yards for the Detroit Lions. Chris Wilcox had two tackles as a defensive back for Tampa Bay. Isaiah Kafusi stole the show yesterday. Big tackle for loss. Five tackles that was tied for the most of any of the Indianapolis Colts. Brady Christensen had a pancake block on the same play that Isaiah had the tackle for loss. Micah Simon was thrown to twice, but didn't have any catch. Targeted twice, I should say. Did not have any catches. This just in with Zach Wilson. He throws a pass to De Denzel Mims. It was too high intercepted. We get practice updates from Twitter. And Troy Warner had three tackles, including a TFL for the Rams. Matt Bushman had a catch for five yards. Bronson Kafusi uh, for the Raiders. Bronson Kafusi played for the Packers. Chandon Herring got in for the Titans against Zach Dah, who had a tackle for the Falcons. Kyrus Tonga played for the Bears. Uh, nice play on a goal line stand. We'll talk about it in a second. And Sione Takitaki had three tackles for the Browns. Loaded! Hopefully it's not loaded in the regular season. Seriously. 15th ranked BYU women's soccer in an exhibition showdown against Weber State delivered 5 0, including this. Smith crossover! Cameron Tucker slots it home with her right foot. It's 2 0 BYU. Three minutes and three seconds into the game, 2 0. 43 seconds into the game, it was 1 0. Moral of the story, wear pink to the game because that group behind that goal just looked great hopped it looked great where well we're blue but yeah bella felino added two goals in the 54th and 55th minutes ashton johnson scored in the 78th minute byu opens the season against ohio state a team just one spot out of the preseason top 25 so big time matchup to kick things off on thursday night live on byu tv heck yeah dude can't wait Cougars in the minors, last two games. Brendan Lund has a couple of hits, a run and an RBI for the AAA Salt Lake V. Shout out to Steve Clark. And Colton Shaver also had a hit for the AAA Sugarland Skeeters in a 4-3 loss to the Albuquerque Ice Tips. As Jerem mentioned before, the AP Top 25 preseason poll just released. BYU received six votes, and they sit 11 spots out of the Top 25. We like to joke BYU is ranked 36th. 36th in the top 25 arizona state in at number 25 utah number 24 usc number 15 so in the ap poll unlike the coaches poll three ranked teams for byu opponents rather and just one in the coaches poll usc this means likely utah will be ranked when byu plays utah in week two because utah plays weaver state in week and four. we care way more about the ap poll anyway yes and arizona state plays two winnable games before so they'll be ranked in week Listen, three i can't wait for arizona state to come in with all that swagger and then eventually not deliver at the end of the season it's going to be awesome I have thoughts there relative to BYU in a similar situation. I know right? you BYU do. gets ranked early but doesn't finish. Just win, baby. Let's go. Yes. Recency bias of BYU finishing ranked 11th has erased all of the past. Has it? No. Oh, okay. But I'm going to pretend that it did for a moment. It was fun last year. Don't get me wrong. Yes, it was. All rise and shout. It's time for What's Trending. You're talking about it, and so are we. It's What's Trending on BYU Sports Nation. What a weekend for BYU football players making their NFL preseason debuts. Holy cow. Jerem, there were so many great moments between Zach Wilson and Kyrus Tony. You talked about the goal line stand. Dax Milne got things started on Thursday night, had a nice punt return. Isaiah Kafusi, a big tackle for a loss. And I'm just scratching the surface. What was your favorite moment from the BYU in the NFL weekend? There, yeah, there were a lot. And I don't want to make too much of a preseason game because if you're really good, you don't actually play that much. You know what I mean? 
Uh, but there are guys scratching and clawing to try and make the 53-man roster or at least hang on a practice squad and get a shot during the season. So it is exciting when they make some plays. And there were many of them, and there are many dudes, so, which is awesome. Um, certainly the NFL tweeting out a highlight from Isaiah Kafusi is notable uh, with hundreds of thousands of followers, if not millions. Uh, that's awesome. Isaiah Kafusi's TFL was sweet. From the famous Kafusi family yes. from BYU. Yes, exactly, which is pretty cool. Kairos Tonga getting some love for the Bears goal line stand against the Dolphins on a fourth down uh, at the goal line was pretty cool. But it's got to be Zach Wilson because Zach's success is tied to BYU's perception. It is. If Zach, if Zach doesn't do well and or the Jets don't do well with Zach, that reflects on BYU, whether we like that or not. It is separate from BYU, but it's really not. Okay. So Zach going six for nine, looking smooth, getting the ball out on time. Missed a couple throws. That's fine. You're not going to make every throw. You're a rookie. But there's a lot. The pendulum swung last week to the Justin Fields, Trey Lance camp, right? Oh, I don't know. Oh, Trey Lance, 80-yard right? touchdown pass. Five for 14. He had, like, the lowest quarterback yeah. rating of any rookie quarterback. And, again, I don't want to make too much of one game, right? Either way. Like, if Zach had a bad game, today we'd be saying, well, it was just one game. We should say the same thing about one yeah, positive sure. game. But I was uh, very encouraged by what I saw from Zach Wilson. And it was awesome because, again, getting the ball out, he made a third down and nine conversion over the middle. He made an out throw to Corey, Corey Davis, Davis that was just ball gets out with that zip that we've seen. He talked with us after uh, pro day about, okay, you know what, the NFL ball – is different. I'm getting used to that. Crisp throws the Zach Wilson we know and love. So that was encouraging. That was great. He just didn't look nervous. He looked very poised. Yeah. yeah. And there were situations where, for lack of a better phrase, in the football world, they call it a dirty pocket. When yeah. pass rushers get inside and it starts to kind of look like an ugly pocket, he maneuvered through the pocket, made some throws with pressure in his face, and I just thought Zach personified poise in his first action against the New York Giants. And people will say, well, he was playing against the second team from the New York Giants. I don't care. I don't. In I'm the sorry. Are, 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 are the second team defenders not NFL players? Okay. And I saw somebody joke, well, let's see Zach make that throw to Corey Davis against NFL talent. Oh, wait. He is making it against NFL talent. And again. One, That's all we heard last year was, well, yeah, it's, a, it's an NFL throw, but let's see him do it against NFL talent. He's doing it. Yeah. And I, I like yeah. that. I thought, I thought Good he start. Would, he was poised. I thought he was uh, calm. Within that game, my favorite moment was when he made that throw on third and nine. Was it to Denzel Mims? Or I can't remember. But it's, it was kind of like uh, a double post, and he threw to the backside receiver. After he makes that throw, his offensive lineman looks at him and is like, yeah, that's my quarterback. Yeah, right? and then we can't say no. what it looked like what Zach no, said to him. but I just was like <laughs> – there, there was a moment between Zach and his offensive lineman yeah. that was like, you're my quarterback. I'm going to protect you. Nice job. Nice throw. And I was like, okay, those, those are the moments yes. that will solidify him as the quarterback, the guy as a rookie for his New York Jets teammates. Yeah, he's got to have a lot more of those, of yeah, course. But I, I liked it's, it. It's a good start. Chad Johnson, Chad Ochocinco tweeted, Zach Wilson, that's the tweet. That's the tweet. Like, and, yeah, he's going to be noticed. And there's a lot of pressure on him because, again, the, don't be fooled. The pendulum will swing back and forth with love and hate, right? With with NFL quarterbacks. As soon as he throws his happen, first interception, watch out. Zach will have like a three pick day this year, and it's gonna stink, right? Um, but he's also gonna have a three touchdown day and zero picks. Like, just brace yourself for the roller coaster that is being in the NFL. Taysom Hill gets the start as well. Should mention that. And apparently, he is being slated, according to a couple of sources in New Orleans as the number one guy for week number one, not just in the preseason when yep. the actual season starts. Uh, I'd be shocked if he's not. The The love affair between Sean Payton and, and Taysom Hill is evident, right? Jason, sure. Uh, Jameis Winston is a newcomer to this, just signing last year. They're going to give Taysom a shot. If he's the guy, yeah, he's the guy. If he's not, then he can always go back to the role he had before. Another cool thing that I, I saw collectively over the weekend was how about four quarterbacks who played collegiate football in the state of Utah – Two from BYU, Taysom Hill and Zach Wilson. But then Jordan Love at Utah State for the Green Bay Packers. Nice game. And Tyler Huntley for the Baltimore Ravens leads yeah. a comeback. By the way, the Ravens have won like 18 straight preseason it's, games. Yes. Which, which is so random. Which, yeah, it doesn't matter. Okay, but to see four <laughs> quarterbacks from the state of Utah 
Well, that's a fun fact. Starting in NFL or playing in NFL preseason games, I thought that was really cool. Yeah, that was great. Do you want to mention Tyson Williams, too, speaking of the Ravens? He looked like a stud, Jerem. Okay, okay, Tyson Williams is battling for a top three spot to make the 53. Um, he's not going to surpass J.K. Dobbins or Gus Edwards, who both were like, Eight touchdown guys last year and 130 plus carries for the Ravens. He the leading rusher, hard. by the way, for the Ravens is Lamar Jackson, thousand yards. Those other two were like, you know, uh, 700 plus. But Justice Hill is the third guy who didn't. He played in 12 games, but only had 60 yards rushing. Tyson Williams got a chance to be the number three for the Ravens, and uh, Ben Criddle put it out, and I think we feel the same way. If Tyson Williams is, doesn't get hurt against Washington, that these T-shirts, by the way, were the T-shirts for that game, by the way, the polos, um, then all of a sudden that season is very different. I right? know. It's not seven and six. It's He makes a game or two. Nine and four, honestly. ten and three. Maybe, right? Uh, we think that possibility exists. So I'm excited to watch Tyson. Shout out to the Chiefs-Niners game as well, we mentioned. Five Cougs involved in that The one. picture after the game That's is pretty awesome. Cool. That's pretty cool. Daniel Sorensen. Uh, he's standing in the middle of Fred Warner and Corbin Kafusi, and then uh, you got Zane Anderson and Kai Nakua on the other side. Kai had, Kai had six tackles in that game. Yeah, and Zane, uh, Daniel looks small next to Corbin because Corbin is a giant. Like, Corbin is 6'10 and massive and playing a line. So Zane looks like, uh, you know, small, and Daniel does. Those are big dudes. Those are big dudes, okay? Kai's left uh, arm, by the way, fully tatted up and sleep. That looks incredible. That looks that, awesome. That Polynesian culture. I That's love it. That's amazing. I love it. The Nakua I'm brand. I'm getting something similar tomorrow. That's crazy. Uh, wow. No way. <laughs> Big news for Jerem Jordan revealed on BYU Sports Nation. That would be quite the move, right? Yes. I don't think I could handle the That'd pain. That'd be quite the flex. I that would be quite the flex, I Jerem. Couldn't, well, I, I need a bigger arm, I think. <laughs> Too skinny. I wasn't going to say anything. <laughs> So many cool things yeah. happened for BYU guys in the NFL over the weekend. Again, it's preseason, but let's celebrate it. It was really yes. cool. Not all these guys are going to make the squads, um, but hopefully they get a chance sure. at practice squads and chances elsewhere. Right? Our question of the day, what was your favorite moment of the BYU in the NFL weekend? Let's go to Voice of the Nation. This is the Voice of the Nation on BYU Sports Nation. At Ames Flames answers on Twitter. How can I even choose? I guess my favorite is just that there are so many to choose from. Yeah. Coogs grepping all over the NFL. Maybe it's Daniel Sorensen's band of brothers pick of the five dudes from BYU playing in one game. Hashtag BYUSN. And that's a picture that spans, you know, eight years of BYU guys. Pretty wild. It goes from what? 2012 or 11 to 2020? Yeah, because, well, Daniel Sorensen started in what, I guess 2010? He, played, he actually played in 09, I want to say, before his mission, maybe, or 10? Yeah, so maybe a, even more, longer. More than a decade. Love to see uh, the picture of Isaiah Kafusi with Brady Christensen yep. and Micah Simon, too. Yep, pretty awesome. Really fun. Pretty awesome. Okay, coming up, the battle between Tijon Lucas and Alex Barcella from practice, you need to see. Plus, we continue our understanding of the wide receivers at BYU with Ross Oppo. He's a guy that's been coaching him up. Who does he like to step forward this year in that Cougar receiving group? This is BYU Sports Nation. They prefer to be bringing the heat. Getting set for success. Demonstrating their drive. But when their blood and sweat turns to tears or anything else, we lay the groundwork. For BYU's athletes to hit the ground running again. And you as well. Intermountain Healthcare, official medical provider for BYU Athletics. My name is Spencer Finnegan. I'm from St. Louis, Missouri. During my sophomore year, I got married to my sweetheart, Mary, and there's tons of unexpected expenses when it comes to marriage. We were looking for scholarships. I found the replenishment grant, and my local alumni chapter gave me a grant to help me focus in on school. I'm so excited to now that I've graduated, 
give back to those students that are coming to BYU in the future. Let's kick off AFR on BYU TV. What they did in that fourth quarter was not unexpected in my book. Everyone did their job perfectly, and it resulted in obviously a touchdown. Who knew that he had these kind of hands? And right at the snap of the football, they both go right downhill. And, and that was the end of that. <laughs> he, did, he, he knocked him down pretty quickly. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. BYU TV is sending two Cougar fans to the season opener against Arizona and Las Vegas. One grand prize winner will get a trip for two, including flight, transportation, lodging, plus tickets to the game. Five second place winners will receive a BYU football fan pack and a Roku. Follow BYU TV Sports on social media for details. Winners will be selected and random entry does not guarantee a prize. The winners will be announced August 20th. That's this Friday on BYU Sports Nation. Today's word is... Cougar tail. Yes, I could go for a three foot long maple donut right now. That's one word and T A I L. What a great invention. Like my yes. kids, my kids are excited about one thing whenever I come home from a game day. Hey, Dad, did you bring a donut? Did you bring a cougar tail? So do you have to get a that, cougar that's tail? That's a thing. Time? That's a thing, yeah. Mm. I can't blame Is it like them. like crusty by the time you get no. home because it's been a minute. No. Oh, okay. No, you just keep it wrapped up in the package. You can, oh, okay. you can, you can make it fresh enough. Yeah, yeah right? fresh-ish. Let's be honest. If they're kids and they're under the age of 10, like, they don't, they don't care right. anyway. They don't care. You're right. They don't care you're anyway. Right. Yeah. Yes, exactly. It's just that I brought the donut home. We are live in Studio B. This is your day-to-day -day BYU sports play-by-play. -play. I really want a donut right now. I'm yeah, really, I really I, want always. Can we just constantly have a cougar tail up here? That'd be a great thing. Yeah. Let's, let's make it happen with the... Uh, Put it in the budget the for 22. Yes. I'm also excited to talk to our first guest of the day. Former BYU wide receiver Ross Oppo is joining BYU Sports minute. Nation. It has been a while, Ross. Welcome to the show. Thank you guys for having me. I appreciate it. Thank you. We have uh, watched closely as you've been working with a handful of great receivers on your social media platforms, including some BYU guys. So let's clear the air a little bit and, and get into the details of that. Who specifically have you been working with over this past off season to help them get ready for the 2021 season? Um, as far as the BYU guys go, um, you know, I've worked with, with Buka Samson, um, uh, seen Keanu Hill. Um, I actually was working with some of the defensive guys um, as Robertson Daniels was working with them. I'd, I'd go and uh, do some releases with, uh, with the, the defensive guys, um, Talmadge Gunther, um gosh there's there's so many other guys there but uh yes yeah, so there's been a handful of a uh, handful of BYU guys so you're working with receivers and DBs what exactly are you coaching them up on um and so what what we did um this was kind of middle of the summer we were just doing like top ender routes um uh, and then the releases at the line um kind of the 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 two most important parts um just getting off the ball working on um uh, you know, giving giving moves, uh, taking different lanes, making things look like uh, like something they're they're not, um, and just so just getting open, creating separation. Um, those are the biggest things uh, that we work on. Just small pieces of the game. So, is this a full time pursuant of uh, of becoming a skills coach, Ross? You want to make football like your life for the time being? Um, it, it is my life right now for the time being. Um, I, I was in mortgage. Um, and sitting at a desk was tough. And I, I just was like, man, I, I've been doing football my whole life. Um, you know, growing up in Texas, I, I, I watch football, you know, as, as much as I can. And um, to just have it be done was, was tough. And so, um, you know, I, I went to the field to, to actually run and seen some guys there. And one guy was in a three point stance <laughs> at receiver <laughs> and I started helping him. And, and, that's when I stumbled across, yeah. and that's when I stumbled across some of, uh, some other receivers. And then, um, from there it just caught fire. And, um, I've been doing this full time for, for about almost two years now. Um, but I've been doing this, uh, doing training for about four ish. Yeah. So, so it took a little while to, to go full time, but now this is what I spend my days doing. So, get to see my, my baby girl and, and my wife a lot, a lot more. 
Fantastic stuff. Ross Oppel with us on BYU Sports Nation. Please tell me that no BYU receivers have gotten down in a three-point stance. I, was that Britton Covey? <laughs> no, no, it, it wasn't. Uh, <laughs> no, de- definitely not any of the BYU receivers. Um, I think that that uh, that that room, they they have nothing to worry about over there. Um, you just got to get the, the ball out the QB's hands and you'll be fine. Uh, that's a, a stacked room right there. And then the room right next to him with the tight ends, another good room. It is, right? So let's talk about the receivers specifically. Obviously, you've worked with a couple of these guys, but tell us what you've learned about Puka and Samson, Keanu Hill and Talmadge Gunther and some of these guys that makes this room special because I think it was upgraded from last year despite losing a 1,000-yard NFL receiver. Yeah, um, I think I think just the, uh, they're, they're really competitive. Um, you know, even though they're on the same team, they, they understand that only only two to three can play. You know, given there's a tight end on the field, um, and so they they they're all pushing each other to the limits. Um, you know, I'd hate I'd hate to be uh, I'd hate to be a position coach right now, having to choose um, because it's it's literally going to come down to the last day of camp. And so the the biggest thing is is these guys are are competitive. They're dogs, um, and it shows. And so I'm I'm really excited to watch the watch the receivers and the offense play this year. Okay, Puka and Samson specifically, what makes these guys special in your opinion? Um, they're fiery, <laughs> super fiery. Uh, it's, uh, you know, it, it might be taken, um, you know, maybe aggressive or, or, or violent <laughs> by other people, but uh, I, I think the, the fire they bring, the attitude they bring, um, you know, it's going to be different. Those type of things um, pass on to other players. And so just, you know, not even anything to do with the football. It's just the the demeanor that they bring um, to the field when they when they step on the field it is uh, is really fiery. And then Keanu Hill, you got to rep your Texas guy, right? Um, he's a guy we've oh, seen man. a little bit. He's caught a touchdown pass or two. He could he could be a stud here, uh, maybe this year or the next year. What do you think of his skills? Yeah, um, he man, he's he's another stud. Uh, he's another six four guy, six four, maybe like two ten, um, and and he can run. Um, I know we, we, we worked a lot on his cuts, um, just getting in and out of his cuts uh, as a bigger guy. Um, those are the tougher things to do. And so we spent a lot of the offseason working on his cuts. Um, but he, I mean, he's another guy that can play a lot. Um, there, there's just so many guys there. Um, doesn't matter if it's first, second, or third string. Whoever's in um, is going to cause some problems. Former BYU wide receiver Ross Oppel on BYU Sports Nation. He's working with wide receivers and defensive backs to help the Cougars get ready for the 2021 season. A name we haven't mentioned in this interview yet is Neil Pau. And according to some high-level sources within the BYU coaching staff, he might be the most complete, impressive receiver in camp right now. What do you think of Neil Pau? Uh, I like Neil. Um, he reminds me of one of my old teammates, Cody Hoffman. Um, Neil, he, uh, man, <laughs> another big receiver, another guy that can run. Uh, you know, he had big plays last year. Um, and I, I'm, I'm not sure how his injury is that he had. But um, if he's past it, uh, I mean, that's just going to be another guy that um, these receivers have to beat out to get some playing time. How about Gunnar Romney? He's the incumbent, you know, returner in, in yards. And you look at FBS, 19.7 yards per catch. He's a returner in the country in yards per catch, minimum 30 uh, receptions. So Spencer called him the wow. best receiver between the twos last year because he had a hard time actually getting into the end zone. But uh, yeah. I think he's going to break out this year for at least six touchdowns. What do you think? I, I think so, um, at, at least six. Um, he, he's, he's fun to watch. Um, and and um, I'll say it again, <laughs> another 6'4 guy is crazy. Like across <laughs> the board, it's, it's going to be huge guys that, uh, that can catch the ball and that can run. Um, and, and they and they can all run routes too, so it, it's a uh, it's a pretty crazy combination. Usually, when you get the bigger guys, um, it's usually just like go routes. Um, you know, the the big face passes where you know you just throw it up in the air, they jump up and catch it. But these guys can run curls, they can run outs. Um, you know, they can take a slant to the house. Um, so the 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 receiving core is impressive. I think Gunner's going to have a a good season. We asked another of your teammates, Mitch Matthews, this question last week, but I want to ask it to you as well. How do you keep all of these wide receivers happy, Ross? (laughs) Um, I I just have to do a good job. Um, I have to take my time. Uh, Make sure, you know, make sure that 
that these guys are are progressing and that they can see the progress make sure the parents can see the progress and uh, most of all make sure that the coaches um, you know that control the playing time can see the progress so it it, it is a tough um, uh, uh, if I want to call it a job it is a little bit tough um, you know sharing all the attention and, and staying locked in for hours at a time uh, making sure that I get the max maximum amount of effort from the guys but um, I, I, this is what I've done growing up. Uh, I've been training my whole life um, since I was a kid. And so th this isn't anything, uh, anything different for me. Um, and I think I was put on this earth to, to, do, to do this. <laughs> so uh, it's hard to keep everybody pleased, but um, it's, it's definitely doable if you, if you put the effort in. Okay, so you've got a tough job working with these guys, but are there enough passes to go around to keep all of the guys happy on the field once the games start? Um, that, well, that's between them and their quarterback. <laughs> and, and that's what we call the uncontrollables. <laughs> your, your job is just to run and get open. If the ball comes to you, then you make a play. If it doesn't come to you, then, then you know, you can't control that. And so um, it, it, does, it, it does get a little crazy um, when I have uh, receivers that play on the same team um, because some of them will try to sneak in behind their teammates back. Uh, usually they, you know, they ride together, but this day, this guy drove by himself and I'm like, Hey, where's someone's going? Oh no, he, he, he didn't want to come today. He was just tired. He's sleeping. And so the, the guys are pretty funny in that regard. That does happen sometimes. Ross, it's great to talk with you, man. I'm not sure why we waited so long. We won't wait so long next time. Let's uh, do this again soon. For sure. For sure. Thank you guys for having me. You got it. Ross Oppel, former BYU wide receiver. He is working as a skills coach with several of the BYU receivers and helping out the defensive backs as well. You know, it's fun. Uh, Margin Hooks is doing this as well with some of the guys in Texas, which is super fun. So I, l I love having the former guys involved. Like Jordan Pendleton helps work out a lot of the guys in the offseason, strength and conditioning. It's fun to have the program spread beyond the program, yes. if you will. It's awesome. Okay, uh, coming up. Neil Powell on what Dax Milne uh, showed him as possible. My guy Dax doing some work, helping out his other teammates. Plus, did Zach Wilson exceed expectations in his NFL preseason debut? This is BYU Sports Nation. century of helping members achieve their financial dreams is that we are stronger together. We achieve great things together. And while we are still here to serve you, we know together feels different right now. It might take some time, but we're looking forward to the day when we can gather together again. We're still here guiding you forward. Tim Daly Ford in Spanish Fork offers a large inventory of Ford vehicles, including a selection of cars and trucks, providing a range of transportation choices. From the Ford Fusion sedan and the Edge crossover SUV to a range of pickups, including the F-150. Each product line comes with options to enhance performance, comfort, and safety. Think Ford, think Tim Daly Ford in Spanish Fork. Familiar with the BYU TV app? Yes. I beg your pardon? Sure, it's got great original TV shows. But it also gives you access to family films for free. Wow. Awesome! So gather around, grab some popcorn, and let us do the rest. It'll be fun. Watch some of your favorite films anytime, anywhere. <laughs> with a free BYU TV app. I like it. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Visible Supply Chain Management. On the latest Deep Blue, I chat with the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel, how he got into broadcasting, how Paul James' heart surgery changed Greg's career, and the job he didn't get that led him to today. Let's do it on the BYU Radio app or where podcasts are found. Really fun combos, Greg. 
Again, I, di I didn't know. And <laughs> there's our picture of Greg on the set when he's like 10 and 12. <laughs> hey, Greg. <laughs> Wearing his grandma's glasses. He turned down the job when he was uh, that age. He was that age. Uh, PJ said, hey, you want to be the guy? He's like, I'm actually 12 and I live in Alberta. <laughs> He is Jerem Jordan. I am Spencer Linton. This is BYU Sports Nation. Let's whip it. The Cougar Whip Around presented by Visible Supply Chain Management tackling America's most challenging shipping problems. Did Zacharias Wilson do better than you thought in his preseason opener? Yes. He looked more poised than I expected him to be. I thought his feet would be a little bit more frantic, a little more happy. There's a ton of pressure on him, so I expected him Double to, be, meaning. to be okay. But he, he exceeded my expectations. He looked, he looked really polished. Yes. His stats don't matter to me. Um, unless he was like one for nine. Then, or nine for nine, right? But the way the ball was coming out. Yes. The timing, the rhythm, like you said, uh, the poise was really good. So, yes, that was better. But I'm not shocked because I think we all expect Zach to do this kind of thing. It's just first game. And then in the regular season, it's like, okay, can he can he be decent? Can he be good? Can the weapons around him perform good? And he's a guy over the past few years that has really fueled his own personal motivation by people telling him he can't do yeah, it. Yeah, so Zach, you can't do it. Well Just done, kidding. Zach. He's awesome. He's you you do can't that. do it? Colin Cowherd doesn't think he can do it. Woo! No, he's great. He wore the wristband last year. The haters wrong. Awesome. Keep proving wrong. Yeah. The AP Top 25 released earlier this hour. BYU sits 11 spots out of the Top 25, but both Utah and Arizona State are currently and should more than likely be ranked when BYU plays the Utes and Sun Devils. They will. Count on it. Does that set up perfectly for BYU with those two early season games against ranked opponents? Sure. Uh, regardless of whether they're ranked, I think it'll be interesting. Utah's going to beat Weaver State and be 1-0. And, up. and uh, Arizona State plays UNLV and Southern Utah. Congratulations so be, on being 2-0, Arizona State. 2-0. Now, if they're not 2-0, that's actually probably worse. But, uh, yeah, when beating a team that is ranked at the time, awesome. Even better is beating a team that finished ranked. So we'll see how those two fare. I can't wait for BYU to derail Arizona State's lofty expectations on September 18th. Well, and, and their lofty expectations aren't in non-conference. They're in league to contend for the well, Let's just get that train South. off the tracks before they even get into the Pac-12. Even if they lose to BYU, they can still win the Pac-12 South and have a chance you're to, true. to, you're, you're, to you're go spe to, You're speaking right? truth. Yeah, but that, like if that's how Utah thinks, you know what I mean? Like, let's just win the Pac-12 and we can go to the Rose Bowl or maybe even college football play. It's hilarious that you mentioned Arizona State in the Pac-12 championship. It is hilarious. That's really funny. I said a very funny joke. I'm going to write it in my diary <laughs> really tonight. really funny. Yeah. Because I'm pretty sure that it hasn't happened since Jake Plummer was the quarterback. Yes, and you You were 12 years old when that happened. Yes, it was a wonderful time. I like Jake. To see. <laughs> what did you learn in BYU women's soccer's 5-0 win over Weaver State? That their offense is still really, really good and explosive, and they probably could have scored like eight or nine goals if they left all of their first teamers in. They, they should be uh, equally explosive. They literally return it. Yes, so the offense, the question mark was, because BYU's defense had some problems last season due to injuries and youth. Is the defense in that back line better? And they've got a bunch of players back from injury that should shore up that back line. Jared, yep. that's the thing that will take them to the next level if they want to get there. And they did. Final four. Let's make history. Let's not talk. Sweet 16 would be sweet. Go from there. BYU tickets tweeted out a look at the progress on the Lavelle Edwards Stadium scoreboard, including this at an almost completed south end zone scoreboard. What do you think about the progress you're seeing, Jerem? Looks nice. Can't wait to be in there for the Utah game on September 11th. So the north end is a smaller video board, if I understand, than the south end. The south end will actually be the larger one. So it's coming along. Can't wait. Uh, what, three weeks away from? Uh, yes. Well, uh, three, I guess almost four from BYU and Utah? From, yeah, that's yeah, it's a little under Utah. three to BYU. Or I can't wait to actually be able to see the replays on a video board in the Bellevue Stadium. It'll be great. Hopefully, there are many highlights against you. Yes. And Arizona State. Replay will and become Boise. part of the fan experience. And Virginia. All right. And Idaho State. Shall we finish with some basketball? Who did it better, Alex Barcel or Tijon Lucas, sitting uh, threes on the side bench? Ah. Uh... I just want to give some love to the new guy, Tijon Lucas. His celebration was great, too. That was pretty good. Yep. He, and he said, it's a great day to have a great day, which is a great phrase. I mean, they're both uber-talented. Okay. <laughs> 
Alex had a little more RPM, a few more RPMs. Are you surprised by that though? No. Knowing Alex? No, Alex. Alex is a competitor, man. I'm just glad he didn't dislocate his shoulder when he was oh, doing that. Oh, yeah. There's like, I think he's having Tommy John after that. It's crazy. Coming up, rise and shout out to a BYU athlete's coming. And Neil Pau tells us how watching Dax Milne changed his approach to this upcoming season. This is BYU Sports Nation. If I got hurt and was laid up at home, I wouldn't even think to call a lawyer. What a hassle. I'd want to meet them first. What if I told you that for your first consultation, your lawyer will come to you, home or hospital? Really? Really? They do that? If you've been seriously injured, we'll come to you. It's your job to get better. It's our job to deal with the insurance companies and protect your legal rights. Learn more at SiegfriedandJensen.com. Hi, Spencer Linton here letting you know when your company joins the BYU team as a corporate partner, your brand can be featured in sports programming on BYU TV and BYU Radio. In addition to all of the great games, you can be part of the BYU Coaches Shows, place your message in Countdown to Kickoff, basketball pre- and post-game shows, and each weekday on BYU Sports Nation. We invite your team to join ours and become a corporate sponsor of BYU Athletics. For details, email sponsorship at byu.edu today. with Kalani Satake and Greg Rubel. When I was younger, I was a better dancer. Don't show any more dancing on you. Okay, good. <laughs> I think we've developed some really good habits the last couple weeks and, and looking to step it up again. A lot of great things can happen when they care. Not bad. That's good stuff. Hey. Yay. Yeah, thank you for ending on that one. That was a good <laughs> one. <laughs> Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. After further review is on tomorrow night, 7 Eastern on the BYU TV app as Dave Blaine and David look at high-performance players under the microscope this season. Watch previous episodes of the show on the BYU TV app. Welcome back to BYU Sports Nation live from Studio B. We are oh so much closer to football. In fact, this many days away. Hit it. Countdown to the Wildcats. 19 days. That's a weird one. Yeah. I guess we could do 90 days away. Yeah, that's weird. Uh, Saturday, the team had a scrimmage at Lavelle Edwards Stadium. Neil Powell was involved. I talked to him after that. His journey has been incredible. He's been one of the best, if not the best, receivers in fall camp. Now he's a leader on this team. Here's that conversation. Neil, you look amazing on our countdown to kickoff set. I, do, do you just want to... You know, after every game, just come on over and sit in that same spot. That looks good to <laughs> this me. This is the first time I've been here, actually. I think I've been so locked into the games, I didn't even know this was here. So, we do the, yeah, we do the pregame, postgame there for home games, which is pretty cool. And you guys just had a scrimmage at the stadium. I mean, you have a handful of these a year. You have six games. And then, so it's always special when you're at the stadium. What was the scrimmage like today? It was good. I think uh, we had pretty much about 25 plays were kind of the ones we went thud. Um, and then about 50 plays, uh, the twos and threes, fours, they all uh, went live and stuff. But overall, I thought it was good. I think we remained healthy for the most part, and I think that's the biggest thing uh, leading up to, to Arizona. You said went thud, so you kind of just make that initial contact but don't wrap up kind of deal? Exactly. exactly. Yeah. Is there anyone that when they come, come up to you, you just, like, give them a little more of a thud? Like you have a friendly <laughs> encounter? I think it probably depends on the play. So if you had gotten someone, I know the running backs, they all kind of watch out for each other. So if a linebacker or a DN tries to, you know, does a little more, I know that next play, whoever's in, they try to go after that player or whatever, just to give them a little <laughs> more nudge. But I think us receivers stay calm and cool pretty much for the most part. How'd the scrimmage go? Because here we are three weeks away from today, when the Sarah's, it's a little bit less than that, uh, from BYU and Arizona, man. I thought it went well. Um, there's a couple penalties, but I think overall, I think as as an offense, we moved the ball uh, really, really well uh, up and down the field. Uh, certain 
penalties that cost us to move back, which would turn into three points, knowing that Jake's going to knock him down. Uh, but we'd rather have seven up on the board. So I think with these next two scrimmages that we have, we'll clean them up and uh, we'll be ready when the time's, when the time's here. Were the reps among the quarterbacks with the ones still split into three? Yes. So each, each quarterback had their own, whatever their total amount of reps was. And uh, Fessy and A-Rod had them each go with whoever the ones were with the one on the line and then me, Gunner, and whoever the third receiver was. A, lo a lot of the conversation, obviously, in fall camps about the quarterback. So let's go there for a sec. Is there a point where, as a receiver, you would prefer to know who the guy is, or does it not matter? Um... I don't know. We built so much chemistry with Zach that, you know, I felt that by the time, even when there was some speculation that there was a battle or whatever, we kind of knew that it was Zach. Um, it would be nice to know maybe by next week or something. So, like, the, we have two weeks pretty much to prepare with that one quarterback to know how we like the ball and when we want the ball now compared to, you know, other receivers. They get a better feel for how we work and how we slide and catch the ball. So, um, yeah, I think two weeks before the game would be nice, but knowing Kalani, who knows, you know? You can name names if you want, but uh, earlier in the week, Kalani Sataki said there hasn't been that much separation, but that he thought that that might happen soon. Was yeah. he basically saying, hey, we're going to scrimmage and kind of see? I have no clue. Um, I think I agree with Kalani. There hasn't been much separation. Um, I've texted him at the beginning of camp for just one of them just to go and take it for everybody to see, you know, you're the man. And however it plays out, it plays out. But we know that uh, they did everything that they could to just win over the team. So whoever does that, I think that the best, uh, they'll win it. No one's talking about using two quarterbacks, which is a good thing because I, I hate that. I don't know about you. It, like in the past, we've always done it a, a little bit. It never works, man. You got to name a guy, <laughs> right? Exactly. I agree with you on that one. <laughs> okay. How are you doing uh, in camp? Because I, I was told by somebody important, that hey, Neil Paulo is the best receiver right now. So that's quite that was quite the compliment. Yeah, I think it's been good. Um, I think with you know the two brothers, although I knew kind of my position in the receiver group with the two brothers, them coming, it kind of just raises your level um, of play. Um, had a great off season, um, just working, just working out, working on what I need to do, and then watching a ton of film. I think it was probably the biggest thing. So coming into fall camp, I haven't really seen anything new watching defenses from the NFL on how certain receivers run it against, you know, DBs in the league. Um, I've kind of translated that to college where college is a little, uh, a little simpler. So the game's moving a little slow to me right now uh, compared to the past where it's moving a little faster. And because of COVID, you're not a senior, you're a junior, which is exciting. Yeah. Like, like yeah. when you first showed up, it was 2017 Portland state. You make a great yeah. move. You dive into the end zone, you score a yeah. touchdown. You're not sure if you fumbled it. So you dive on it after that. <laughs> but like that was, that was four years ago in yeah. a couple of weeks. Like you've had this awesome journey. And of course your journey has been one of redemption of, of what, you know, a mistake and coming back. I've always really respected you, Neil, for the yeah. fact that you were still around. You didn't leave. You didn't sulk. You didn't hide. You were around. What? How has this journey been for you of going through that, coming back, and now being one of the main guys and the leader in this group? I think it's cool. I think I'll have some time to reflect on it when you know football's all done and said. But um, you know, you do have those moments where you do look back and just super grateful. I think is the biggest thing for me. Um, for Fessy sticking with me because me and Fessy had our ups and downs when he first got in. Um, me and my parents just what I was doing. We had our ups and downs for all of it to come back and, you know, come full circle to where now I'm in a great relationship with, you know, both Fessy, my parents, my family, but most importantly, myself. I feel like I've been in the best uh, mindset and mind frame going into the season. So I'm excited to see what the season has in store um, to put myself in the best position also for hopefully next year I can do exactly what, you know, Dax did. And that's sort of the goal, right? He paved the way of like totally off the NFL radar. Yeah. to totally on it and being drafted. So what did you learn from the Dax experience that makes it so you feel like you could have a similar year? Yeah, me and Dax are boys. And I think I was the closest to Dax um, out of the receiver group. Um, and me and him just love talking football. Um, so, and him just taking his craft super seriously, even during practice and even when he didn't want to be out there, he just, you know, put his helmet, strapped it up and just went. So I think that's probably the biggest thing I took from Dax. He just continued just to grind. 
grind and grind from walk-ons and now scholarship and then um, putting aside off the field situations with his mom, knowing that's that whole story with him to just come and just play football. It was time to play football, play football and categorize certain things. So that's my boy. And uh, just thankful for learning those things from him. It was fun to see him get a couple of catches, have a great punt return the other night. That was pretty cool. No, it was. <laughs> Okay, so tell me about this group of receivers. You mentioned the Nakua's come in. Obviously, Gunner's back. There's some really talented young guys that are developing as well. Chase Roberts back from a mission. You know, like if Chase in a regular year, I feel like Chase Roberts would get like a ton of run this year. Yeah. But I feel like it's a loaded room where he can actually just kind of figure it out and then be a big player in the next couple of years. What what's that room like? As as you mentioned, that could be a threatening thing to like your own playing time but it feels like it's not with the group it feels like no we're going to be way good together yeah I think that's because of the, the culture that Kalani has set uh, that you know obviously everybody wants to play but because the culture is so strong everyone's uh pretty friendly not gonna lie we all just are trying to support each other and obviously they'll be bummed whoever's out there with me and Gunnar come Arizona and who's getting more playing time and stuff uh, but I think for the most part, we do a great job of just supporting each other when people make big catches. Tanner Wall and Talmadge Gunther, they had some big time catches today. Um, and we were all just like super, super happy for them. So I think that's the, the group right now and how the room's been. Are you guys still riding the high of the NIL walk-on thing? Because that made this amazing splash nationally. Yeah, I think, uh, I think yesterday was kind of like the last bit of it. Um, or maybe when it happened that day, I think guys are just, you know, it happened. It was, it was super dope. Obviously everybody was super excited, but now it's just time to get back to work. Okay. So no, is the answer, uh, <laughs> defensively who sticks out that's sort of emerged as a guy that maybe last year we weren't talking about, but that you've noticed on the other end, like, Oh, they're way, they're really good. Yeah. Um, so I, I mentioned D'Lo, there's someone, I probably would just give it to the linebackers. The linebackers just seem like they're everywhere. From Max Tooley to, to Peyton to Keenan Peely. Um, trying to trick them for offenses, opposing offenses, I think will be pretty tough because those guys can move. They're smooth, fast, love the game of football and understand it was super well. So I think that whole group as a whole um, will be tough to, tough to go against. Let's finish with this. Uh, everyone, you know, there's love languages. Everyone wants like two of that. There's a book about it, right? Yeah. Everyone wants words or, or, you know, validation, words of affirmation, right? Everyone wants that to some degree. With you, it's interesting. You have done nothing to not deserve more conversation about you, right? Yeah. But last year, the conversation is around Dax and it's Gunner. And it's like, there's Neil, Mr. Consistent. How much do you want or need that? to thrive personally versus, you know what? It doesn't matter to me. Yeah, I think from high school, um, I really wasn't the, obviously the biggest recruit and I'm not the type of person that seeks that or needs that really. Uh, I think I'm pretty self-driven to know that, you know, that stuff will come. Um, and if I just stay even keel, keep my head down, uh, just to up, stay on task and uh, stay on course, I think everything will come. I think every, everyone's journey is a little different. And Dax had his a little sooner than mine. And, you know, if this is the year that mine finally happens out of these, you know, four years, then so be it. Um, but I think there's just a time and place for things to happen. And, um, I'm just excited to see what the, what the future holds. Well, I love that attitude. And honestly, you, you are underrated. Um, and the fact that you're playing so well and now you're even more of a leader in this group with a better group, right, yeah. is, is awesome. I can't wait to see you in this group play this year. And I uh, appreciate you taking the time, man. Oh, thank you. We'll be ready uh, to Arizona. Heck yeah, 19 days away in my conversation with Neil Pau Saturday. So the scrimmage went well. Shout out to Ethan Slade, a uh, backup free safety uh, who had two picks. But yeah, Neil, he doesn't need a ton of validation per se. He's just ready to go. He He's the new play. most underappreciated player at BYU. There you go. He's the new guy. Coming up, the elite voice of the day. And our rise and shout outs. Great story from a women's soccer player. This is BYU Sports Nation. Those who leave the most meaningful legacy seem to be the ones who never intended to. The same person who loses himself seems to be the same that finds himself. And why? Well, they give the best of who they really are with no thought of return. 
find a cause you can put your heart into, my son, in which to lose yourself. I started the Deseret Donor Advised Fund for this reason. Because in the end, my greatest legacy is you. Trio Orem Senior Living believes in empowering seniors to live life to the fullest. We help eliminate stress out of daily life when you live at Trio. Less time focusing on housework means you can socialize at one of our many events with safety in mind, of course. And did we mention our spacious apartments with modern amenities? Learn more about setting up a private tour at TrioOrem.com. BYU TV Super Girls of Summer so super? Their bravery, service, honesty, courage, curiosity, kindness, determination, and their desire to change the world around them. Watch the Super Girls of Summer on BYU TV and the free BYU TV app. Let's kick off AFR on BYU TV. What they did in that fourth quarter was not unexpected in my book. Everyone did their job perfectly, and it resulted in obviously a touchdown. Who knew that he had these kind of hands? And right at the snap of the football, they both go right downhill. And, and that was the end of that. <laughs> he, did, he, he knocked him down pretty quickly. BYU Sports Nation is presented by Mountain America Credit Union, guiding you forward. BYU Sports Nation, always available on demand via the BYU TV and BYU radio apps. Or download the podcast by Googling BYU Sports Nation podcast. You can play it at point five speed, one, you know, one, one and a half, two. It's weird, man. Our question of the day, what was your favorite moment from the BYU NFL weekend? At Joe Wheat, 27 answers on Joe Twitter. Joe Wheat. Yes, Wheat. The heavens parting and obtaining a vision of every one of these guys entering the Hall of Fame. <laughs> Dream big, The Joe. spiritual Hall of Fame, yes. Blue goggle alert. Our elite voice of the day presented by Sundance Mountain Resort from Matt Flack Drew. Nobody had a bad showing, but Isaiah Kafusi's tackle was Fred Warner-style excellence. Yeah, it was awesome, man. It was great. Yeah, five tackles and that big tackle for loss. Today's rise and shout-outs presented by Mountain America Credit Union, the official credit union of the BYU Cougars. I want to give it to Ellie Mon of BYU Women's Soccer. Love it. Because she went into the game late against Weber State, seven months after breaking her leg against Weber State, chested down a ball and assisted a goal. And it was awesome just to see her kind of exercise the demons and yep. get rid of that PTSD. Yep, that's awesome, man. Great, great mention. Good for Ellie. Neil Pau obviously has had a journey of significance to become – a guy that matters, uh, you know, in that receiver's room as a leader as well off it after a mistake a couple years ago. And all the Cougars in the NFL trying to make it. it so fun. Great weekend. It so fun. Great weekend. Our thanks to today's guests, Ross Oppel and Neil Pau. Sergeant Dennis Pitta ran out of time. Uh, your scholarship as a walk-on won't be paid for, sir. Oh, snap. He's excluded from that? <laughs> <laughs> he was at the moment. For Jeremiah Spencer, shout out to Butch Pau. We'll see you tomorrow on BYU Sports Nation. If you haven't seen the commercial, go watch it. So go back and watch the beginning of the show. Karma.